Hey everyone, welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and our weekly look back at the hot comics from six months ago. This week we're looking back at the hot comics from April 26, 2024, and I'm recording this on Friday, October 25th, 2024. As always, those dates are so you know when this information is actually relevant because the market is always moving and changing as we'll see by the price differences here in just six months. And as also, as always, we're looking back to CBSI Hot Top 10 and the Comic Tom Key Collector Hottest Trending Comics of the Week. I know my intros are very similar every week, um, but I feel like it's important to make sure you guys know what we're talking about and what we're looking at. Why do we keep doing this as we've been doing this for approaching six years um, in just a couple of months? Because, um, you know... There's always hot books coming up. People are always chasing books. And I just feel like this is a good good way to kind of look back, understand what was going on in the market, see how those books continue to, to perform in the market after they weren't hot anymore. Uh, and so we make better decisions about what we're chasing, what we're being patient on. So with that, uh, this week we got 16 books to talk about. Let's dig in and see if we can learn anything. Uh, first up, we have Voltron, number one. Um, so this hit the list back in the spring because there were rumors of a live action. Uh, so this is the first Voltron in U.S. comics. It was going for 20 bucks back then. 9.8 was 174, both of which were up compared to what this book has historically been. Well, recent, this was an all-be-back until recent rumors of Henry Cavill being attached to this live action production of Voltron. And actually, I think confirmation that he's attached to it. Um, has caused this book in the last couple of weeks to go through the roof. Uh, this is now a $35 to $100 book raw, 9.8 or 425 to 725. Uh, big range as this book is kind of jumping at the moment. Uh, so this is an up and straight cash book at the moment compared to six months ago. We will see how this performs once we get further away from this Cavill news. My guess is it settles somewhere lower than it is right now, but probably still up from that six month ago price. Uh, next, we have Marvel Team Up number 14 on the list for the second week in a row. And this was because Season 2 of Invincible was coming out. And we got this storyline with a fake alternate version of Spider-Man. But we got this story, so that was because of people to chase this book. Uh, 150 to 275 for raw copies back then. 9.6s going up for all the way up to 750 to 900 plus. Now it's a 90 to 180 book. 9.6 is going for 200. 9.8 is going for 600, less than those 9.6s back then. So yeah, the raws have dropped. We're probably I'll be back to trap, but the, the slab copies are definitely a dumpster fire uh, on this particular one. Uh, as we've moved away from that show and the that episode, this book is not still a very valuable book, but it's not made near those prices that we had back in the spring. Uh, next, we have a uh, Cheval Noir, uh, another Dave Stevens cover hitting the list. We've had several of those over the last month or so. Uh, this all was around that Dave Stevens documentary. Uh, and this book was hitting all-time highs at 9.8 at 1,200. The previous high was 750. That tells you how much of a jump that was. Uh, raw copies were going for 100 to 275. Now it's a 65 to $130 book raw. 9.8, only one recent sale, mainly because the listings are still quite a bit higher uh, for 281. So yeah, that's down at a dumpster fire. Um, yeah, people love these Dave Stevens covers. They still have value, just not near the craziness that was happening back this spring with related to everything Dave Stevens. Uh, all right, next we have Something is Killing the Children, number 36, the Art Germ Virgin variant, or Virgin Thank You variant. Uh, that was a one per store. Uh, raw copies of this were going for 30 to 75 back then, and it's probably been a little suppressed because there's an STCC foil version. I think there's a trade dress version, so there's not. This isn't the only version of this particular cover, uh, but now it's a 15 to 35 dollar buck, 55 to 70 for a 9.8. So definitely a trap, borderline dumpster fire here, uh, but definitely a book that's backed up quite a bit. Still very cool. Um, one of, I think, the better Art Germ covers of the last year or two. Um, and I'm an Art Germ fan, but I do really like this cover. But there's just multiple versions of it, so it has suppressed the price a little bit. Uh, next, we have Harley Quinn, number 39. Uh, the Mindy Lee, 1 in 50. This book, this kind of sci-fi Harley, took off back in the spring. It was $120 to $150 for 1 in 50. So approaching that triple ratio, which is really good for 1 in 50, 
we don't see that very often. Uh, now it's a $70 to $100 book, 9.8, 200, but only one sale. Um, yeah, so this book is definitely like, still got a lot of value, just not near that value and definitely a trap that we had back in the spring. Uh, all right, next we have X-Men Forever, number two, the first of two Art Adams covers we're gonna talk about this week. This was a uh, one in 25, uh, going for 40 to 50. These Art Adams, one in 25, have been hitting the list very consistently over the last couple of years. Um, with mixed performance, uh, this one was going for 40 to 50, so right around double ratio. Which and it performed not like one of the better Art Adams, but more like a typical one in twenty five. And now it's a ten to thirty dollar book, right around ratio or even less. Nine point eight one twenty. Not a lot of sales there, but a couple. Uh, so down in a trap though on the raw side is this book back way up to kind of around ratio. Uh, next we have Jackpot and Black Cat number two, another Art Adams one in twenty five, with similar but. Very similar performance, uh, 50 to 60, this one. So it was a little doing a little better in the moment uh, when it came out, but now it's a 25 to $50 book. So a little better on the raw side, 9.8, 120, but still basically a trap as most of the sales are kind of in that 30 to 40 ish range. Um, all right, with that, we're gonna start moving into MCU before we do um, X-Men 97 and then a little Deadpool, which I guess technically is MCU. But this first MCU book is Hulk number one from 2008. The first cover appearance of Red Hulk. Reminder, he does not appear in this book uh, inside the pages of the story. He doesn't appear till I think it's issue two, but I'm not 100% on that. I could be remembering it correctly. But a good reminder that but this is the book for Red Hulk. A good reminder of that we just go for the best cover. Um, he's not even in the pages of this book, but he's on the cover, so this is the one we want. Just like Wolverine is in 180, but we want 181 because he's on the cover. So we're very much cover box. <laughs> it's just the way we work. Uh, raw copy 60 to 85 back then, 9.8 230. And I thought this would back up a little bit as we'd be kind of in between. Not really a lot of news going on around these movies back then. But now it's a 40 to 110 for Raw, so basically same kind of range with a few sales a little higher, a few sales a little lower. But 9.8s have actually crept up, 250 to 400. So we're gonna call this up in straight cash. Um, Red Hulk right now is performing really good in the lead up to seeing Harrison Ford, um, new version of General Ross and the new Red Hulk, and a Red Hulk appearance, both in Thunderbolts and in the new Captain America movie. So. Uh, next, into the X-Men 97 stuff, we have X-Men Deadly Genesis, number one, second week in a row, and this is the first appearance of Vulcan Summers, another Summers brother, uh, raw copies back then were 20, 9.8, 116, now a $2 to $15 book for raw, so raw copies have definitely backed up, with most of the sales being under 10, but 9.8 still sent in 1 to 120, with a kind of outlier sale around 200, so, but we're going to call this because most of the sales are those raw copies. We'll call it a down and I'll be back uh, on this first Vulcan Summers book. Uh, next up, we have X-Men number 52, the first cameo appearance of Bastion. Uh, back then, this book was going for 10 to 15 with a 9.8 sitting around $85. Uh, now it's a $1 to $4 book. Uh, definitely a dumpster fire. No real interest in this cameo of Bastion. And this is your reminder, X-Men 97, Bastion, they were as hot as any product going on back in the spring of any MCU project in the last four or five years. This was as popular as it could get and ultimately didn't move the books related to the main villain of that series that was well, well regarded and well received. Uh, next, we have X-Men, Uncanny X-Men 333, first full appearance of Bastion, 5 to 20 back then, 9.8, 130. Now it's a three to ten dollar book on the raw side. Most of the sales like five or less. Um, Nine point eight, one fifty five, but that's just one sale all the way back in August. I doubt you would get that now. So definitely, an, we'll call it a down, and I'll be back for now on this one. But yeah, neither of these fashion books are going for anything. Just six months or so after the show was coming out. So uh, next, we're gonna move into the Deadpool stuff. This was obviously pre the release of the movie. Because first up, we have X-Men 130, first appearance of Dazzler. Um, everyone was still on the train of Taylor Swift and Dazzler. Did not happen. Um, but back then, raw copies were 200 plus, 9.8, 1700. Now it's a 75 to $200 book, 9.8, 
14 to 1500. This did not crash the way I predicted it would yet um, with when she didn't appear. Uh, I find it interesting that this book still goes for basically you can get a 9.8 of Rogue and Gambit's first appearance for what you can pay for a 9.8 of this book. I realize this book is older, but a little surprise there. But still just a down and I'll be back. It'll be interesting to see how Dazzler maintains going forward. Um, next, we have Avengers, the Terminex Objective. Number one, first appearance of Aloth, um, the big cloud monster from the Loki show and that was in the Deadpool movie. Um, raw copies were 15 bucks, 9.8, 80 back then. Now it's a two to $15 book. Uh, most of the sales, again, under $10. Uh, a 9.6 actually went for $10, literally. Uh, there was a 9.8 that went for 100 but that's just one sale. So overall, down and I'll be back. No reason to chase this book. It didn't become valuable after he appeared in Loki. Didn't change after he appeared in Deadpool. Um, next, we have X-Force number two. Uh, the second appearance of Deadpool hitting the list because obviously the first appearance of Deadpool is very valuable. Second appearance of Deadpool is very highly printed and very easy to get. So people were chasing it. It was mostly an increase in sales as it was still only going for 10 bucks. Uh, 9.8s were going for like 60. Uh, now it's a three to $10 book. 9.8s, 50 to 90. Yeah, down and I'll be back. No reason to chase this in a moment. There are literally a million of these out there. So, uh, all right, next we have, uh, New X-Men, number 114, first appearance of Cassandra Nova, and another example of don't chase a villain from a Marvel or MCU or any kind of project. Um, everybody loved uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, everybody thought this was a good villain. Uh, 15 to 25 back then, 9.8 to 150 to 250, and now it's a 10 to 15 dollar buck, 9.8, 1 to 140. Down and I'll be back. Hasn't sustained. Has dropped back. Um, I guess as it'll continue to kind of slide back as we move forward. Um, next, we have Wolverine number 88. The first Deadpool versus Wolverine. Now, this was going for $100 raw on average back then. 9.8 is 390 And now it's a $20 to $100 book raw. 9.8 is 250 to 400 So just a slight step back on this particular one. Still a cover that people covet. Still a book that people love. Just... A slight step back, step back from since before the movie was coming out till after. Uh, so that is this week's list. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next time. Later.